I would like to introduce this next presentation from logistical hub to key science and observing station, upscaling science and environmental performance at the Norwegian research station Troll by Birgit Nusoff from the Norwegian Polar Institute. Hi there, I am Birgit Njostov from the Norwegian Polar Institute, representing also my colleagues whom you can see here on the screen. In the next few minutes, I will introduce you to a process that Norway just recently has embarked upon, in which we aim to strengthen our performance at our national research station Troll. First, a few words about the motivation behind it all. Antarctic research is, as we all know, pivotal for understanding not only Antarctica itself, but the entire Earth system. SCAR's horizon scan gave us a good overview of all we do not know and an insight into a whole range of questions that need to be explored further. The entire Antarctic science community, on the shoulders of the Antarctic national programs, work hard to close these knowledge gaps, but there is still so much to be learned. Norway wants both to continue and strengthen her contribution to this important international effort, as also underscored by a recent government white paper. We believe that one of the keys to the future Norwegian contribution lies in a dedicated effort to expand the observational capacity at Troll and the surrounding areas. We therefore intend to win through with a plan to establish Troll Observing Network, TONE, as a priority national research infrastructure. Through TONE, we aim to develop Troll into a state-of-the-art observatory for comprehensive long-term observations of the Earth environment, with research and monitoring instrumentations and services in both the atmospheric, terrestrial and marine realms. In January 2020, that is this year, in fact, a group of deputy ministers from four key ministries visited Troll. Their aim was to increase their knowledge about Troll and the role the station has in Norwegian Antarctic research, and also to discuss future Norwegian research and international research collaboration. At the end of the stay, the deputy ministers expressed clear understanding of the importance of securing and strengthening Norway's role and contribution to Antarctic science, using Troll as a platform. The very intense and well-informed discussions that took place contributed to establishing a broader political support for an initiative for a future upgrading of the Troll station. Obviously, a solid foundation is required to support our vision and future needs in Antarctic science. For Norway, this foundation is and continues to be the Troll research station. In the following, we will give you a brief history of the development of Troll and insight into some very early steps that we have taken to ensure that the station is well suited to support the planned upscaling of scientific activities. Troll, location shown here by the red arrow, is Norway's only permanent research station in Antarctica. The Norwegian Polar Institute is responsible for operating the station on behalf of the entire nation. Contrary to most other research stations on the continent, Troll is located on the snow-free slope in the break between the low-lying coastal ice sheets and the high altitude inland plateau. This makes it a geographically important, interesting and strategic, strategic research and observation location. In 1989-90, after many decades of irregular Antarctic expedition activity, Norway finally established Troll as a small seasonal field station to support remote fieldwork in Trondheim Maud land. The station was no more than a 100 square meter building, accommodating in principle only eight people. The station functioned well as a support facility, but only limited research activity was conducted at and in vicinity of the station itself during this phase. In 2003, it was decided that Troll should become an all-year facility, a decision motivated by the desire to increase Norway's contribution to Antarctic science and knowledge production. The new Troll station was officially opened in February 2005, only two years after the decision had been made. A new main station building was built and the old station building was incorporated into this. The upgrading also included a new generator building, emergency station, garage, provision stores, container ramps for equipment, fuel and so on and so on. Although the upgrading of the station 
paved the way for continuous on-site science observation capabilities, such as the air monitoring facility we can see in the picture here. Troll has nevertheless first and foremost continued to be a support facility for remote and large-scale field work. In February this year, after the visit of the Deputy Ministers, the Norwegian Polar Institute invited Statsbygg, a governmental agency and the Norwegian government's key advisor in construction and property affairs, to visit Troll in order to gain their professional assessment of the status of the station infrastructure. Statsbygg was quite clear in its conclusion. Troll as it stands today has more or less outlived itself. This conclusion was really not such a surprise to us. We have seen a continuous expansion of the facilities over the last decades, where new elements have been added onto the existing structures in a semi-planned manner, until we now see that it is no longer possible to achieve further energy efficient, environmentally sensitive expansion. Troll and its operations do comply with the legal framework for activities in Antarctica, but there has over the years been little room to move from good environmental compliance to more extensive environmental innovation although a number of valuable efforts to that end has been explored, of course. Thus, we do find ourselves at a crossroads. How can we ensure that Troll serves as a robust and innovative platform for Norway's planned, expanded future science efforts? It is fundamentally important to draw on the competence and professionalism of Statsbygg in the process and it has been extremely useful to bring Statsbygg on board already before any formal planning steps were taken. In this manner, Statsbygg has had its full attention on the potential project from the very beginning and are able to influence the framing of the process in a professional manner from the very start. We believe the joint NPI Statsbygg site visit in February has paved a way for a well-funded project and process. After the site visit, Statsvig has, on the request of and in dialogue with NPI, initiated a stepwise approach to the further work. First establishing what the future needs are, then drawing up potential directions to realize those needs, and in the end provide a roadmap for a formal governmental process for finance planning and implementation. In framing the needs, we have jointly defined a set of overarching aims. That is, what does Troll Research Station need to achieve? And in doing so, we have established goals and indicators relating to research functionality, logistical efficiency, and safe and green energy production. We have furthermore identified a number of requirements that will frame the direction of the modernization project. In this first stage of considering the future needs, we have also identified areas where the current station does not answer to the aims and requirements identified. I will not dive into the details here, but suffice it to say that the current station fails to deliver in a number of areas. In framing the research facility needs, we have with interest looked to the type and amount of facilities held at other Antarctic research stations, and we have also conducted an extensive survey in the Norwegian Antarctic research community to get an indication of perceived needs. So what does the future hold for Troll then? Well, that's when the excitement begins. We are now at the stage where we move from defining the needs to considering the options. Stavsbygg has consolidated all the background information and used this as basis for drawing up a set of suggested directions. Currently, three alternatives, rough and non-detailed at this stage, are under consideration as potential directions to be put forward for further consideration and discussion. In a first alternative shown on the screen here, most of the existing infrastructure would remain in use, although some rehabilitation would be required for parts of it. The only new development in this alternative would be the construction of a new service building, which would include garage, workshop area and lab facilities. Alternative 3, which you see on the screen now, is a concept that more or less points to an entirely new station, revolving around a new main station building and a new service building. Alternative two lies between the two concepts I have shown you here. As noted, whatever alternative is chosen for the future troll, it is also a clear intent to upscale the environmental performance at the station, 
in particular energy projection and use, which by far is the biggest impact factor caused by our current operations. Drawing on earlier work done to assess options for troll, experiences gained at other stations, and the general and constant development of new technologies, we will consider in more depth a variety of solutions. The use of wind and solar energy will be considered, of course, as will biofuel, fuel cell technology, and any combination thereof. We will also consider various alternatives for energy storage. In short, this process provides us with a unique opportunity to consider a wide array of options, in many ways starting from scratch, and in doing so, in the end, hopefully decrease our environmental footprint substantially. You will have understood that we are only in the very early stages of considering a modernization project for Troll. We nevertheless wanted to share with you information about some of the very early thinking and steps that have been taken and which have been absolutely essential for us on the path towards defining and implementing a future modernization project. To sum up where we are at this stage and where we want to go, we intend to continue and to strengthen our contribution to and performance in Antarctic research and observation activity. The Troll Research Station plays a key role in doing so. And Troll is a station that at the very best is nearing the end of its lifetime. The groundwork for a formal modernization project has been laid by engaging key political and administrative stakeholders as well as involving appropriate strategic expertise from the very beginning. We will use the opportunity to continue to develop Troll as a green station with ambitious environmental goals. And on basis of the work done so far, the next steps will be for a political and administrative discussion and decision. Once the decision has been taken, the further process will be carried out in accordance with national governmental project regulations, which will follow a different paths depending on the expected level of cost in the project. And we are certainly excited about what the next steps will be and what decisions will be taken. We look forward to be able to present that to you at the next workshop. And with this, I want to say thank you for your attention and please do not hesitate to send us any questions if you have. I thank you very much and bye bye.